Welcome to Wired Lotus's YouTube channel. I'm Susan. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to construct an at-home photography studio. The way that I constructed this is I used two boards and I just conjoined them together. Now, I don't have construction or woodworking extensive experience, so there's a few parts of this video that are hit or miss, but the result at the end is going to be an at-home studio. This is for small product photography. The nice thing about this studio is that it is portable. You can take it from room to room, you can take it outside, and this right here is a really good addition if you do take product photography, especially jewelry, and you can go ahead and you can post those items either up on your social media or for sale. So this right here is a great project for anybody wanting to learn how to do this. In the end of the video, what I do is I show you how to take a few photographs, talk to you a little bit about lighting so that you can create the best photo possible for your jewelry or your small product. So thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you find value in this video. And if you do, please subscribe or give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, so here we have the studio. It's all put together. The lights are on. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pull back the lights and I'm going to show you just the backdrop. Then what we're going to do is remove the backdrop and I'm going to show you what we've created. So now what we have left is we have the backdrop. I'm going to remove that. The way that I put this backdrop on is I have here a couple of clothespins and that just holds down this end here. And then I have a couple of clamps up here on top. I can go ahead and I can remove those as well. So here we have now our finished studio. This is what we worked on in our lesson. So let me give you a closer look at what we have here is what we've created in this video. What I had before I created this video were just two pieces of wood and I was using those woods propped up both walls and with uh, cups and different things like that. And I finally said, okay, that's enough. We're going to go ahead and we're going to attach that. So that's exactly what we do in this video. You don't have to use the backdrop like I showed you, the curly thing that we just took off. You can go directly to this piece. As a matter of fact, it's very desirable. So what I want to show you is I want to show you how you can use the turquoise or the bluish color as a backdrop, or you can use the black as a backdrop. So I'm just going to flip this around. As you can see, it's very, as you can see, it's very, very light. So now we have the black in the background. By creating two pieces of wood that are different color, you can really change the mood that you're creating with your photography. So if I had this, and I did not have my backdrop, I could bring my lights in and I could just, it would just be lights, camera, action at this point. I'm going to show you the hardware that we created on the opposite side so that you can see how we created this studio. What we've done is we've just put these L brackets in and we've created a stabilizing force here for this. And as you see, it is so light. I could just take it anywhere. If you have any comments, please let me know. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have or to talk to you about your own project. I wanna hear about your success. I'm gonna show you the supplies that I'm going to use in order to create something a little more sturdy rather than just having a couple of boards here, just like I have. So what I do have here is I have boards that are two feet by two feet and I have taken those and I have painted those and I kind of like that look of, of chalk paint so what I've used is I've used some chalk paint on that and uh, I've done one in black and then I've done one in the blue what I've done with this one here to kind of get this variegated look what I've done is I've painted it black and then um, let that dry. And then after I let that dry, I go over it with just a little bit of that um, chalk paint. So I'll just take that kind of that turquoisey color chalk paint and um, I put that on there. Then what I do is I let everything dry and then I put on uh, the cream wax and uh, you put that on and you let that dry. I usually let that dry for about an hour or two, probably you don't have to 
let it dry that long, but I do just to be safe. And then I take a, uh, like a t-shirt material and I just buff it all off. And it kind of gives a, a kind of a satin sheen. And I like that for photography because if it's too shiny, then it just kind of gets in the way with my light. So here are the supplies that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using a drill. I'm also going to be using a drill bit. This drill bit is 5 64ths. So it's, um, let me see, it's just, here's, it's just in part of my kit here, right here, you know, 564. So that's what I use. And anytime I'm using a rotary tool, like a drill or, um, anything like that, I use, um, goggles or I use safety glasses, um, for this, because I, you know, don't use a radial arm saw or a bandsaw. I just use my jeweler's saw. So maybe if you, you, you know, we're just going to be cutting up um, some wood that looks like this. And uh, so if you know of somebody maybe that has a, a saw that can do that for you, it might save you a little bit of time. But if you have a jeweler's saw, you can use that too. You're going to need a ruler. Your, I use uh, four pieces of wood that are all the same size. That just kind of elevates this a little bit so that when I'm drilling, I'm not going to be drilling into my table or my other piece while I'm doing that. We're gonna need a pen. I use a couple of paint sticks to uh, just kind of offset those screws because the, the wood that we're using is so, th so, so thin that I need to make sure that like when I put these screws in that we kind of offset those a little bit. So what I do is I just take a couple of pieces like this and I uh, go ahead and I screw down into, into those. So that way it doesn't pop through the other side and it still might. And if it does, I've got a solution for that, but we're gonna see how this works. So the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need L brackets. Now these L brackets that I have are one and a half by one and a half inches. And uh, they have two holes on one side and they have two holes on the other side. These, I buy these as a kit. Uh, I think there's four in the kit. This right here in this kit, it came with all the screws. So the screws, the L brackets, they all came together. But I'm only gonna be using three for this project. Um, and so you won't need uh, the, the fourth one. Maybe you can save it for The boards you're going to need are going to be, need to be about 3 16th of an inch thick and two feet by two feet. So they're square, my boards are square. Now, if you don't want a square board, you don't have to have it. I find that with your depth of field when you are filming, that that works out really well to have a nice deep depth of field here with your photography. So that's pretty much it for the supplies. We might find as we go on that I need to pick something else up. Uh, and if I do, I'll include that in the video. And in the description below, you're going to see all the supplies. I've got it all written out here for you. So you don't have to memorize or take notes. You can just kind of go down there and you can see that. Okay, now I think we need to get started on the project. Let's get going. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be creating these shims. I use a paint stick in order to create them. And uh, I need 12 of these guys and they're going to be the same size as our L bracket. So in order to achieve that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking my paint stick, I'm going to be lining up my L bracket here, and I'm just going to be creating this little line here. And, okay. And then I come over here with my jeweler's saw, just over here on the side of the table. And uh, this goes pretty quickly with the jeweler's saw. So let's go ahead and just, Give it a good, there we go. Just back and forth a little bit with the jeweler saw. You can kind of see, there we go. Now, I went ahead and I created 11 others. So now we have our 12 shims. All four of those blocks, just to kind of keep things even and up and out of the way when we drill need to be placed down. Uh, I've just marked where I think I'm going to be wanting those L brackets to go. I'm going to be putting one up here to the right, one here in the middle, and then one here to the far left. So the first thing that I do is I'm going to be bringing here, I'm going to show you here on the left side what I'm going to do. I'm taking two pieces of those shims that I cut the same size as the L bracket and I'm going to be placing those here in 
this area right here to the left, I'm making sure that it's squared off to the edge here. And what I can do is I can take my L bracket, put it there and just kind of push that together and just make sure that that's nice and squared off. I could use wood glue and I could glue my shims if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to take a couple of clamps. I've got a clamp here and I've got a clamp over here. Here we go. And I'm just going to clamp those. going to just do that on the edge because I need to be able to get my L bracket in here so that I can create a mark. We're going to create a couple of uh, marks there where we put that L bracket. Just going to just create those with a pen or a pencil. doesn't matter. Just as long as you have those marked and mark them well. And what I do when I mark that is I just kind of uh, just kind of circle that center there of that L bracket. Now that I have my two marks, I can go ahead and I can take my drill. My drill has that drill bit, that 564 drill bit. And as I stated before, I do make sure that I put on my goggles before I get started working any rotary tools. Okay, so there we have it. Now, this right here, this board is up a little bit. And if I look, I can see that if I'm not careful, I can just slightly touch the other board. So I just wanna be a little bit mindful of that. Even though I have my wood, um, my wooden blocks down there. So I might hold that up just a little bit while I'm drilling or use larger blocks. Unfortunately, I didn't have four larger blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to drill in the first hole. Now I'm drilling where that mark is. So where that mark is there is where I'm gonna be drilling. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, I forgot to mention that I'm drilling not only through the two shims, but I'm also drilling all the way through this board here. Now let's go ahead and do the second hole. And I'm just going to put that right on that mark. Make sure you're directly on that mark. Okay, so now my two holes are drilled. Here we go. My two holes are drilled there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to leave my um, clamps on there. I'm going to bring in and put in the um, L bracket. And I'm going to bring in one of those screws. I might have to adjust ever so slightly that clamp just to make sure that I'm in the right place. Yep, there I am. I can get rid of these goggles now. And I'm going to bring the drill, or I'm, yeah, the, um, the screw in there and I have a Phillips head screw and I'm just going to screw that in there. So the screw is being a little persnickety. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in, uh, uh, it looks like this is just uh, like a Phillips head attachment that you can put into your um, chuck here. So I'm going to put it in, tighten it up really good. And then I can go ahead and drill that the rest of the way through. So I'm just placing that in and I'm drilling it until it goes all the way through and I'm finding that it just emerges there on the other side. So that one turned out pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and get started taking the screw and I'm going to be putting it here into the second hole. I'm going to get started here with my screwdriver, get it in as far as I can with a screwdriver, or there we go. And then when I get to a point where it gets a little bit tough, I'm going to come in here with my drill with the Phillips head attached to it, and I'm just going to finish it. Okay. Go ahead and I can take off the clamps at this point. And this is what this looks like at this point. It looks like this. And you can see the screws just a little bit. I'm not overly concerned with that. What I'm going to do is take a little Sharpie and just kind of color those so that they will blend in with the back. Or I could just take a little bit of paint and just put a dab of paint on there the same color. So there we have the first of three. So let's go ahead and do the other two. Let's go ahead and do the middle one. We've got our two shims here. We're going to strategically place those right there in the middle and take our L bracket. Make sure we're nice and squared off there. 
Okay, now we're going to bring in our clamps just here on the edge. And I'm just clamping them to the top board, not the bottom board, just the top board. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my L bracket, put it on here, and I'm going to support it by kind of pushing in a little bit because I wanna make sure that one, it, it stays steady. So I'm pushing it in and I'm just stabilizing it on both sides here. And I'm creating those uh, marks right where those holes are. And I know you can't see that because my big finger's are in the way, but trust me, I've made two marks. I made one here and I made one here. Okay, I can go ahead and take those off now. I'll take that off now, set that aside. And I'm gonna come in with my drill. So now that I have my marks there, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to drill my holes. And the second hole. We're going to line up our L bracket where we put those holes. I've got my safety goggles on. There we go, okay. And so I'm going to bring in that first screw right in that hole. And I'm going to place my Phillips head on there. I need to make sure that this board is more supported here on my table. It is not very supported. So there we go. It's nice and supported. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to... Okay, I've got the first one. I'm going to go ahead and put in the second screw. This one here, I'm going to just kind of get started just like I did before. There we go, with a Phillips head. And now I'm going to come in here with my drill. Okay, there we have it. So now we have the second one. Let's go ahead and go on with the third one. Go ahead and put our shims, just like we did with the other two, right up against there. Use our L bracket to make sure that we're flush and we're nice and flush there. Put those clamps there on the edge. There we go. L bracket in, just sliding it here, right here in this area here. And I can go ahead and I can mark those areas where I want the screws to go. So first mark, here's your second mark. And I'm double checking that, yep. Looks pretty good. Now I can go ahead and I can drill. Put on my safety goggles. Get my drill bit in. I was a little bit off with that other hole, but let's just bring our brackets in and see if it still lines up. Move this clamp over just a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure these line up. Yep, I can certainly make that work. I was off a little bit when I came down with my drill bit, so I just want to make sure that that's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and just line this up here. And I'm going to bring in my Phillips head screwdriver and my screw, and I'm going to begin. Now, because this is just ever so slightly off, this hole down here, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I wanna put both screws in at the same time. That way, if one gets put in and the other can't slide over, then I'm not out anything. So that's going to kind of lock those both into place. I can go ahead, bring my drill bit, bring my um, Phillips head in. My table is supporting this and my hand is supporting it as well. And then I'm coming through and I'm just, okay. Go ahead and release those clamps. Our, here we have all three of our L brackets. You can see how that's just poking out a little bit. Not concerned about that. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be taking our board and we're going to be 
drilling it right into the other side of that L bracket. And that's going to stabilize that so that we can use that for um, putting our backdrops on. Okay, let's go ahead and get started doing the next step. So when you put the back side on, it's gonna look like this, just like this. I'm gonna take two of those shims. I'm going to put it on the edge. We don't have to worry about squaring that off because the board will do that for us. I'm going to put it in the general location that I want that to be. And I'm going to just make sure that those boards are lined up right here on the edge and here. So I've got my shims here and I can go ahead and compress that pretty darn good in there. I want to work with my right and my left ones first because I want to be able to come in here with my um, clamps and be able to clamp this down. I cannot clamp in the middle because, well, it's in the middle and it won't reach the edge. So I have that wooden block in the way. So I just need to move that wooden block out of the way a little bit. So now what I need to do is I need to come in with my clamp. I wanna work on the left and the right side so I can clamp this. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but our first hole, we can't get that into the shim. So this will be secured with one screw right here. And I'm just finding that out for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my mark here and I'm going to go ahead and drill my hole. So I can go ahead and I can just pull this back here like that and I'm going to drill my hole. I'm going to bring my block in as close as I can to that. There we go and I'm going to drill. I'm going to bring my piece back up into this area here, right where I drill my hole. Again, I want to just be absolutely sure that we're nice and level there. I'm going to bring in my screw and I'm going to hand tighten it to begin with. And then I can go ahead and I can use my, um, my driver just to put it in the rest of there. And I'm going to screw it. Okay, that screws in there. That is not going anywhere. So we're going to now go over to the other side. Okay, there's a little bit of a trick to this next step. Because we have this already bolted down here to the right side and we're getting ready to do the left side, if we don't put our shims into the middle before we screw in that left side, we might be in a little bit of trouble because see here I have to lift it up in order to get those shims in there. So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to put the shims into the middle and We've got the shims already clamped here to the left. And I'm going to just create a little mark there and I can go ahead and I can drill. So I'm going to be coming in. I'm going to be drilling. Drilled all the way through. And I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to put that right up against there. And my screwdriver is going to be going in there and I'm just going to hand tighten that. Now before I go ahead and drive that in with my driver what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be um, coming over here to this side and I'm going to go ahead and drill my hole here and just go ahead and just screw that in a little bit there with the hand driver. I'm going to push in here to my with my shim. screw and go ahead and screw that in just that's just you know putting that in with the hand screw so drive those in. okay so I can release this clamp at this point now let's just flip it over and see what it looks like and we're going to see why this is important to hold this together like this so here we have it our finished tabletop studio. I want to come in here and I want to just show you those little holes that we have there. A little bit of paint, like in this turquoise color or a Sharpie marker, just take it and just fill it in on both places and you won't be able to notice that during photography. Now, um, on the back here, I'm just going to show you how that just, how that looks. There's our braces that we have there. 
and um, this is nice and level because we were very careful about putting it that way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I put my drape for kind of an infinity kind of view. So that, and this is one of the reasons why I created these braces. So. Mom, what I have go. here is I have a backdrop. It's graduated from black to white. I'm going to take that and I'm going to clamp that to my backboard here that we just created. And um, we're going to put a clamp on the left and we're going to put a clamp on the I'm right. I'm going from light to dark. If you wanted to, you could go from dark to light. And I'm just going to line up the edge here to the edge of my board. Put a couple of clothespins here. Here we go, and there we have it. This right here is a really, really great way of taking professional photography, either with your jewelry pieces or any products that you might have, like um, if you have any soap products or you have any small products. This right here is a great desktop studio that you can create yourself with a proper lighting, a good camera, and a few really nice angles. You can really get some nice professional photos with this right here. Let me show you. So what I've done is I've shown you here the importance of lighting. Here we have our backdrop up. I have a light box over here. I have a soft light box over here and I have one light box overhead. So that, and then I have my um, 35 millimeter camera. I have that on a tripod. And whether you're using your 35 millimeter camera or whether you're going to be using your cell phone, I highly recommend keeping your camera on a tripod so that all of your frames remain. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to remove my camera for now so that you can see what that looks like there with that piece of jewelry. It just kind of lights it, it's a nice soft light, and you have all of your lights here that are just all circling it. And if we just tilt this camera up just a little bit, you can see I do have overhead light. You don't want your overhead light because you don't want that to compete with the lighting that you have here because the lighting that you have here is very specific for what you're going to be using. So let's go ahead and now take a picture with the accurate lighting and with um, uh, the backdrop in place. This isn't just for jewelry. This is also for food products and all sorts of products. So let's just go ahead and uh, take a photograph here of the um, vegetables. Now let's go ahead and just look a little bit product here. Here we have a bar soap. Let's go ahead and take a picture of that. I want to show you a couple of items that I photographed here in my book. Um, this right here was um, photographed by a professional photographer who um, uh, worked for the publishing company. And these step-by-step uh, -step shots, these were all created in this photo booth like what I have here. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing those step-by-step -step pieces that are done here. Again, here we have um, the uh, professional photo and then another professional photo, but here we have those step outs. So all of those were done right here in a booth, just like this one. I wanna thank Artie Kugler, my stepfather. He's helped me in life to become very comfortable with working with tools and with engineering. Without him, this video would not have been possible and neither would my career working in jewelry. Thank you so much, Artie.